Okay, today we're going to look at multiplying and dividing decimals. The first thing we do when multiplying decimals is ignore the decimal points and multiply as we would do with whole numbers. 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4. Now we count the number of decimal places in both of our factors. So locating the decimal here, I see that I have one number to the right. And looking at the decimal here, I see that I have one number to the right. Now when I combine those, I get two. And we're going to place our decimal point that many places from the right in the product or the answer to our multiplication problem. Our decimal point begins on the right hand side and we move it in two. So our answer is 48 hundredths. So why don't we do one more problem and our next problem we're going to again multiply as if it's just whole numbers. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. 8 times 2, 16 plus 3, 19. We drop down. We need a placeholder. We add our 0. And now we're working with the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. And 1 times 2 is 2. We need to add our numbers up. And now to add our decimal. Again, we're going to count the number of decimal places in both of our factors. So our first factor, I see a decimal and it has one number to the right. Second factor, we found our decimal and we have one number to the right. We add them up, we get two, and that's how far we move from the right in our product for our answer. So we start at the right, go one, Two. So our answer is 4 and 32 hundredths. Now moving on to dividing decimals, again, we need to look at it as a whole number, but this time we need to first move our decimal point. So to move the decimal point, we need to take a look at our divisor. And looking at our divisor, we can see that we need to move our decimal point over far enough to make it a whole number. So right now we have three tenths. If I move my decimal point over one place, I now have three whole. I also need to move the decimal point in our dividend the same number of places to the right. So I've located our decimal and I need to move that one place to the right. So now instead of three tenths, and 1 and 2 tenths, we're looking at 3 and 12. So now we're going to divide as we would do with whole numbers. So 3 goes into 12 four times. 4 times 3 is 12. And we're left with a remainder of 0. We have no more numbers to bring down, but we do bring up our decimal point. This time it's to the right of our number, so the answer is 4 whole. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have 2 tenths and 26 and 8 tenths. Now, there is a decimal point in our divisor, so we need to move it the right enough places to make it a whole number. So we need to move it over 1, and that becomes the whole number 2. And if we do that to the divisor, we have to move the dividend decimal point the same number of places. So we're going to move it over 1 as well. Now we're going to divide as we would with whole numbers. So 2 into 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Bring down our 6. 2 into 6 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Bring down our 8. 2 into 8 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And we're left with 0. And our decimal point can be brought directly up. And we have a whole number again, 134. So we've taken a look at dividing decimals, again, moving our decimal point, the divisor, and then the dividend, the same number of places, and then dividing, and then the decimal point goes directly above into the quotient, which is the answer to our division problem. When multiplying, again, we need to look at the whole numbers first, then we're counting the number of decimal places in both factors, and we place the decimal point that many places from the right in our product 
or the answer to our most